Miss Apple, welcome to the show. Oh, thank you so much, Jeremy. I appreciate allowing me to ask you a couple questions. Yeah, absolutely. How can I help? Uh, you know, it's it's tough. It really is tough. I'm, you know, closer to retirement than I'd like to think. But mm. I find myself in a situation where my supervisor seems to ignore me during staff meetings, ignore mm. my ideas, and then turn around and use them and take credit for them. Wow. How yeah. long has this been happening for? Well, I've been there probably five years now, so at least four and a half. Okay. Well, and have you ever addressed it with him? Is it a him or... Yeah, it is a him. It is. And I try to address it. After the first year, I felt comfortable enough to, to raise the issue and try mm -hmm. to have a conversation offline and, you know, raise my concerns. And the person smiled and said, thank you. So so basically you, you went to him and you said, you know, I brought up this thing in the meeting and it seemed like you didn't really pay attention. And then afterwards, you brought it up as if it were your idea. And then he just sat, smiled and said thank you to that? Yes. Okay. And that's happened over and over over the past several years. Yeah, yeah. And then wow. most recently, though, I said, you know, maybe we should sit down and have a conversation. Because maybe I have done something to you that I'm unaware of. Yeah, and that's good. why you ignore me during the meetings. You know, I was trying to get some, some, you know, just to have some open dialogue, but it yeah. didn't happen. So, so he wasn't receptive to that. Have you having a dialogue with you? Well, I mean, I talked. He listened. He made no comment. Oh, wow. He did. He did not acknowledge his part in anything. Mm. And I don't know what you do with that. <laughs> I I don't know what you do either, honestly. So you you unfortunately have. Uh, an ineffective leader, in my opinion. I don't know. He might be good technically at his job, but he is not a good leader, of, uh, essentially. Uh, if he's allowing this sort of thing to happen um, and he's actually the one who's doing it, it's uh, it's just poor leadership, in my opinion. So uh, so at this point, you know, you've tried different things, it sounds like. You've tried having a conversation about the general relationship, you've tried having conversations about specific examples of when he's done this and nothing has seemed to get through to him. So now, you know, typically during, at this point, what I would suggest is we started thinking about like, okay, what are the, within the framework of, of this particular situation for you? Like, what are the costs and benefits? So what are the costs of you staying versus leaving? And what are the benefits of you staying versus leaving? And I would say that if you want to stay at this job, if you want to, if you want to make a choice like, hey, I'm going to stay working for this individual, even though this is happening, the benefits really have to outweigh the costs at this point. Right. Right. So, do you do you have you kind of it, 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 what are the sort of main benefits of of staying here at this well, point w within um, the framework, within the constraints yeah. that you're experiencing? Yeah. So, I mean, when I look across um, my my field. I am making uh, really good money and ah. the benefits are extremely attractive. Great. I can't get it everywhere I go. And so it's it's tough. And because I'm close to retirement with this particular um, employer, I, you know, I, yeah. I'm looking yeah. at it going, I don't I only pay 87 cents a month or a pay period for my health coverage and wow. my dental and vision is free. That alone is worth it for me to stay. So, OK, <laughs> so the benefits are very, very high. Tell yeah. me about the costs. Tell me about the costs of staying. What does it cost you emotionally well, I have to swallow my pride? Yeah, I have to find creative ways of talking myself down off the ledge because I wish I had, you know, I just for five minutes, I would just like to chew him out or something, but yeah. I know that would be counterproductive. So it's just, um, I focus on the things that I can control. And so yes, that's absolutely. what I try and do. Absolutely. And you know, there's something here about, so number one, not being paid attention to, right. That feels very disrespectful. It also feels like, you know, you, you're not valued in some way. And and number two, taking your ideas, certainly that um, it, it's just unfair, right? 
Right. So we have to, what, what can we do on your end, individually, personally, for yourself or with your family or friends or other people that you trust, your coworkers, colleagues, that makes sure that you, that you um, let's say, fill up the fairness bank, fill up the respect bank, fill up the appreciation bank for yourself to, to feel more like, hey, I am, I am valuable, I am appreciated, uh, these are my ideas, I, I do have some, some control in my life. Like anything that you need that you feel like it's costing you to be in that sort of dynamic, we got to fill those up without that individual's help. We got to fill those up with e- either with yourself or with other people that you trust. Right. Do you have any, any, does that sound right? Does that sound like something that would be helpful to just kind of yeah, remind yeah, yourself you know, that? I think so, because at the end of the day, this job is not, they will step over my cold, dead body to mm. replace me. Mm. So it can't be everything that identifies me, right? Sure, sure. Of so I, it's a long time learning this lesson, I will tell you, probably in the last five or 10 years. But it is something that I have come to the realization that it doesn't define me. And that's so great. that's what helps me get through. But, I, you know, it, it, it hurts. <laughs> yeah, it does hurt. It's, it, it does hurt. And it's it's um, it's really difficult to deal with this on an ongoing basis. And, you know, the, the I, maybe the best thing to do. I, I, I love this path that you're talking about is that you're that you've sort of de-identified with it in some level. Hey, this is my job. There's a piece of your identity in there, but it's not the whole identity. There's lots of other things about you that are important and valuable. And when you're done with this job, you're going to have a life after that. So that's really important. And I think as you're, as you're traversing the next however long you have until you retire, the more and more you can treat this like there's, there's a pesky fly in the room. And it's, <laughs> yeah. just, it's just pesky. It's, it's, right. like, it's annoying, but you know what? I'm not going to lose sleep over it overnight. Right. Like the more that you can get to that space, the better. And and also, I think the more that you can just remind yourself, like even if you have a coworker at work, I mean, do you have any coworkers at work that that also recognize what's going on, that recognize oh, yes. how he's oh, treating yes. you? Yeah. Okay. And they okay. they, you know, and they try and encourage me and, mm. you know, they can tell during a meeting when I, I just go silent. I go radio silent because I know I'm sitting on the other end boiling. And yeah. I'm trying to maintain my composure on a Zoom call, so it is challenging. It is challenging. Yeah, that's challenging. Well, it, it, it'd be it'd be great to just uh, maybe you're already doing this, but it would be great to consistently debrief with some of the people that you trust, some of your coworkers, and say, "Okay, hey, I I know I noticed I was being ignored again or something. Did did it seem like that to you? Okay, just making sure, just making sure I'm 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 seeing things accurately. And right. also, hey." You notice that I came up with that idea and, and he kind of took it, right? That that was my idea, right? And for, and for, for you to get some acknowledgement from from your coworkers who can acknowledge your contribution right. since okay. you won't get it from him. So yeah, getting that getting that, that getting those banks filled a little bit, getting that appreciation bank, that cure you know, that that value bank filled a little bit from other people and from yourself in, in order to get through the next few years because it does sound like the benefits are really high and it's it's it it's is. probably important to stay. Yeah, it is. It is. Yeah. And thank you for that because that 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 debrief part is going to be, I hadn't thought of it that way. So the, thank you for that. Yeah, it's it when you're dealing with difficult situations at work and you've decided that it's worth the cost you're paying, uh, it's still important to feel like you get a lot of support. So finding those people at work who you can debrief with that can you can really feel supported by, that's that's going to be important. Okay. Thanks so much, Miss Apple. Was that helpful? Yes, it was. Thank you so much, Jeremy. I really appreciate your advice. So I'll keep that in the back of my mind and and check in with my coworkers and my mentor and uh, just get a reality check because sometimes it's the filter that we're listening through. So I just want to make sure it's not me, um, that it's him. (laughs) Yeah, yeah, super important. Get that reality check, get the support you need, um, you know, and 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 give it to yourself as well. Okay. Thank you. Appreciate it. All right. Thanks for Thank coming you. on the show. All right, take care. Bye. Hey, thanks for tuning into the Peace Building with Dr. Pollock show. Don't forget to subscribe to my channel for more workplace conflict advice. Share on social media if you think your friends and colleagues would benefit from this episode. And if you have a workplace conflict and want to be a caller on our show for free coaching and advice, please email podcast at pollockpeacebuilding.com. Thanks.